Chow Yuen is a research scientist at Facebook AI Research. He did his PhD at UT Austin and his master at CMU. He has been focusing on video understanding in the recent and has several great work on long form video understanding, I think will be covered in this talk. Um, so let's still target for 30 minutes, essentially 25 minutes for your talk and five minutes for QA. Um, and also to audience that if you have any questions, feel free to type in, in the chat channel and I will read them one by one later in the QA session. All right, then uh, without further ado, let's uh, welcome Chao Yun. Cool. Thanks so much, Mike, for the generous introduction. Uh, can, can everyone see the slides okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think as most of you already know, uh, today's state-of-the-art video models reason on about like four seconds of videos. And I think this is very short and really not enough. I think uh, most of you probably agree with me, otherwise you wouldn't be in this workshop. But let me just highlight real quick how inadequate four seconds are. So say after COVID, uh, I want to like go to my office, okay? So what would happen if I don't have memory and I can only reason on four seconds, just like our current video models? And to make things easier, let's, let me, let's assume that I can have a, a perfect map and navigation. But I would argue that even with this, uh, I might, be, might not be able to reach my office successfully. Because first of all, what if I enter some intersection like this, like four-way stop signs and cars need to wait in turn uh, to, to, to yield, right? If I don't have memory, then I don't know like whose turn it is and I might just like yield there forever and not making any progress. And even if I can, go past these intersections, what if, you know, sometimes we see some like truck unload, just decided to unload uh, in front of us, of us, right? So typically we might want to like wait for a second, uh, a few seconds and see like what's going on. And just see what we want to like change your direction or something. But if we don't have a memory, then, then we'll probably just like wait there forever and stuck there forever. And finally, even if I can, you know, successfully drive to the garage and then go to uh, my office. What if I forget my key? Okay, then I will probably need to like go back to my garage and then uh, get my key. But if I don't have memory, by the time I arrive at my car, I already forget why I'm here, why I'm here. So like just go back to the office again and then go back to the, the, the garage and then just like stuck in this infinite loop here. So I, I hope that this highlight clearly that uh, even for very simple tasks like this navigation, uh, long horizon reasoning is actually very important. So how can we start building video models that can start to like reason uh, uh, on a video uh, in the long term? So I guess probably the most straightforward strategy is to you know, extend our existing video models, such as CDC and ANS, and, and so on to, to cover uh, much longer videos. So first of all, this uh, would face some scalability, scalability issues. It'll uh, be super expensive to train. But even with, if we can uh, overcome that, I would argue that this might not work very well because these models basically aim to reason across the interactions between like nearby pixels. For short-term videos, it probably makes sense as it can like uh, model things like motion. But for long videos, this no longer make that much sense. Because if you like say change the viewpoint a little bit, the, the, the layer of the pixels uh, become drastically different. So, so what can we do? So the, the point I would like to argue is that these pixels, I think like modeling the interactions uh, of these pixels uh, don't really make sense because these pixels don't interact with each other. It is the, the, the objects, the, per, the people in our 3D world that interact with each other. And the pixels and images are just the projected 2D images at different point in time, given some certain wind angle. So I think to understand long videos, we should focus more our attention on how to model the interactions between these objects. So how can we do this? 
So, uh, so it would be great if we have you know, annotations that annotate pairwise all the interactions between uh, all objects and all people. But realistically, uh, we don't have that. So, so what can we do? So uh, in our reason where what we propose is the mask prediction strategy, where uh, uh, we met certain people in a long video, and then we train the model to predict uh, uh, what, what, what the masked person are doing. So for example, uh, in cases say, okay, there's one person talking. I think as humans, we will probably guess that people near this person will probably be listening to him. Otherwise, this would be uh, implied, right? Or similarly, say uh, we see some people drinking or eating together. Uh, we will probably guess that other people around them are probably also drinking and eating. So we humans can do this because we know like how typically uh, human interact with each other. And we know this like social common sense. And with this task, um, I, I think there's a whole that our machines can also learn these kind of uh, social common sense like we humans do. And the good advantage of this strategy is that uh, this no longer require any annotations. So uh, to be more concrete, what we do is uh, we, we propose a method called object transformer. So what it does is that we first want to uh, build a representation for each of the people. And to do this, we first run detection for all the objects or people in the video. And then we track them over time. And then based on the detection and tracks, we can build some instance level representations that aggregates all the features or informations along the track. And then we can use a transformer architecture to model the interactions between these instances. And to train this model, what we can do is, you know, mask out certain instance representations, and then train the model to predict the features of the masked instances. So uh, intuitively, say the feature is like short-term action features. Effectively, what the model is doing is to predict what the person is doing, or say the, 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 the feature representation is the object features. Then effectively, what we're doing is to predict what objects are more likely to be there. And, and so, so hopefully with this procedure, uh, the model can uh, learn uh, common sense about uh, our, our world uh, in an self-supervised way. And, uh, and let's see how, how this works. So uh, we first of all evaluate this system on standard uh, atomic action recognition datasets, AVA. So the goal of this task is to uh, predict the atomic action for each of the uh, person in the video, such as like talking, watching, standing, and so on. So if we use a, like a standard short-term model, like 3D CNN, uh, we can, the state of the art accuracy is about uh, 29.4. So here we use uh, a strong backbone of uh, slow fast uh, resonate 101 with uh, 128 frames. So this is really a, a very strong uh, backbone uh, uh, nowadays, okay? And what if we use our method to do this mass prediction? Well, it turns out that it can get to very close to the performance of state of the art model. And I think this is quite encouraging because if you think about it, this model didn't even see the target. It only predict based on the context, but it, and it can uh, already get close to the performance of state of the art model that actually sees the counter. So uh, if we further combine these two approaches, just to like combine the predictions, and we can boost the performance to uh, a lot higher. So this suggests that the model is indeed able to learn something, uh, to learn about how objects and people interact with each other and help us to have a, a more accurate action uh, recognition. Right, so, so this is great. But if, if we, we zoom out a little bit and, and think, the, the, what, what this model can do? Well, this model, this model is doing is still, you know, to recognize these uh, short-term uh, concepts, right? Like rounding, standing, talking, and so on. 
And these are really not a tech that would really require that much of the long-term reasoning, or at least you won't benefit that much from long-term reasonings. So I think these are not really ideal tasks to um, evaluate our community's progress on long-term reading understanding. So what are some of the tasks that, that, that would be more suitable? So uh, let's think about uh, movies for, for, for a second. So what kind of understanding would require long-term reasoning? Well, I think some concepts like understanding the full story of the movie or to understand say like relationships between the characters, their personalities, uh, what do you do next and so on. I think these, if we can understand these kind of like high level concepts, I think arguably this will require uh, quite non-trivial long-term understanding. So I think like these like high level content understanding is quite important, but this is not the only one, right? So there's also some concepts uh, associated with the, the, the form of video itself, such as the genre of a movie or the directing styles. And I think to get this right, uh, the model also need to you know, perform the return reasoning. And finally, I think if the models can start to appreciate videos, such as to tell whether it's a good or bad video, whether it's going to be popular or not, I think this is also a quite an uh, interesting and challenging test that will require long-term reasoning. Okay, so I think overall all these tests uh, uh, should be much uh, much more suitable than existing uh, short-term action recognition uh, tests. So now the question is uh, how we can construct new benchmarks and data sets uh, to to, uh, to 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 do this test. So first of all, I think the uh, the video source is not not really an issue, right? So uh, so so on, on YouTube, there's a channel called Movie Clips uh, channel. So it already contains more than thirty thousand uh, videos, and each of the video is a, like a one to three minute clip that's uh, sampled from from a, a movie, right? So so I think the the source of video is not not a problem, but how about notation? Well, it turns out that for each of the video, uh, it also associated with a, a rich source of information, right? So for example, uh, with each of the video in, in this uh, channel, uh, there's very high quality annotation or uh, like, like human uh, description to, to describe what's going on in this, uh, in, in this uh, video. So this can serve as a ground truth for our uh, content understanding uh, benchmark. And so that it also contains things like uh, movie, the name of the movie. So we can associate that to IMDb to obtain even more information about this movie, like the genre, directing style, and so on. And finally, it also contains uh, rich information about user engagement. And we can use this information to train the model to, to, to appreciate our videos just like we humans do. So uh, putting all these together, what we have is a new benchmark called uh, Long Form Video Understanding Benchmark that comprises of uh, nine different uh, tasks. So uh, it contains some of the content based tasks, such as uh, predicting the relationship between actors uh, in, the, in, in the video, so like whether you think they are friends, uh, are they wife and husband, boyfriend or girlfriend, and so on. And I think to get this test right, uh, the model do need to uh, look at no, not just a few friends, but reason across uh, a long horizon to understand how they interact with each other to get this right. And we also have tests like uh, uh, to, tests to uh, classify different ways of speaking, like whether it's confronting, explaining, discussing, and so on. And we also have tests on uh, scene or place uh, prediction. And we also have some tasks on user engagement prediction task. So it can predict the like ratio, meaning the, the ratio between like, like and dislike on YouTube, or to predict the popularities uh, on, on, on YouTube. And finally, we can also construct some tasks on movie metadata, such as predicting the director, predicting the genre, predicting the writer of the movie, or even predict the year of the movie. And so I think altogether, this uh, hopefully will cover a wide range of properties that will evaluate uh, like a wide range of properties or aspects of our uh, 
long form video understanding system. All right, so now we have a benchmark that we can uh, better evaluate our model and let's see how our, our, our method uh, work. So to evaluate our object transformer on the new uh, LVU benchmark, uh, what we do is we still do the same mask pre-training, um, you know, just like uh, videos. And then we train, we, we fine tune this pre-trained model uh, a little bit to, to, to perform this uh, end task. And, 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 and to, to compare, uh, and we'll, in experiments, we compare with several baselines. Okay, so the first baseline we compare to is a standard CDCNN approach, which basically just run short-term CDCNNs on short clips. And then we will uh, aggregate by, at the end by average pooling to combine the, the, the predictions. So this is probably the most common setting in uh, video recognition literature. So for example, like kinetics or charades, uh, data set, uh, most of the models uh, use this approach. So, uh, so we, we also compare with this approach to our, the benefit of long-term reason. And we also compare with a second type of model that is like a video bird, where it also uses a transformer to model uh, long-term information where instead of modeling objects, it model the interactions between frames, okay? And we compare these two with ours that instead uh, model the interaction between objects. And let's see how, how they work. So, um, so we can see that for content understanding, uh, our object transformer uh, performs the, the best um, across three uh, different tests. So I think this supports that uh, modeling the interactions between objects is quite helpful for understanding the content uh, of, a, of a video. And for uh, user engagement tasks, like uh, predicting the like the like ratio of YouTube or number of views, popularities, and uh, this approach also uh, works really well. And for metadata predictions, uh, the results is uh, a bit mixed. Okay, so our method works pretty well for uh, director and genre prediction. Uh, but for writer predictions, uh, our uh, model doesn't work that well. So uh, I think writer prediction is arguably one of the hardest tasks in this benchmark. And I think our, our model is uh, not able to uh, solve this correctly. And I think this is just a very big room for improvements in, uh, in, in our, our approach right now. And, and finally, uh, for year predictions, it turned out like, like the 3D CNN works the best. So this is, like, at least from the hindsight, not surprising, right? Because uh, videos from different years, they have just very different, uh, you know, these like uh, low level statistics. Uh, older movies are way, with way lower resolution. So, so the shorter model suffice to do well in this task. And overall, uh, our, uh, our our method works uh, the best uh, in general across the the nine nine uh, nine nine tests. Okay, so in short, uh, I, I hope that uh, in the talk today I uh, convinced you that uh, long form video understanding is is quite important. Uh, without it, uh, I don't think computer vision is able to do even very. Uh, uh, basic, basic things. And to start having systems that can uh, understanding what's happening in the longer videos, uh, we, 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 we propose some methods to start to reason about like what's happening in the video by modeling the interactions between uh, actors, uh, the people and objects in, in, a, in a video. And we also uh, propose a, a way to, uh, pre to train this model in the ensemble uh, in a self-supervised way, right? And also to, uh, to uh, evaluate these uh, systems, uh, we also collect a new benchmark called long Frame Video Understanding Benchmark. And hopefully uh, this will help our community to evaluate our long Frame Video Understanding models better. And I, ho I hope these will be uh, of some use for your research. And this concludes my talk and Thank you very much, and I will be happy to take any questions.
Yeah, thank you, Chowyan. Very interesting talk. Uh, I think there's some questions posed in the chat channel. Let me check. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, there's a message from Dong Liu. Interesting talk. What is the longest duration of a video that the object transformer can model? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so currently we model about one to three minutes. So uh, the default model in our uh, paper model one, one minute, but yeah. Cool, uh, let's see where's the, okay, there's another question. From Fabian Kappa, um, great talk. I wonder how hard it is for humans to predict the directing style. Do you have any idea about how a non-field analyst would do that for their task? Yeah, I think it's a really great question. I think uh, it really varies a lot across different people. I think for movie enthusiasts, uh, uh, this is possible, okay. I, I personally cannot recognize all of them, but I, I do think it's, it's quite possible. Like, like at least some some directors are very very well known for uh, more better known for in like horror movies and so on or sci-fi movies. So so I think there's some some patterns that's possible for humans to get. All right, let's see whether people have more questions. Uh, actually, I have one question uh, okay. regarding how you kind of like balance different uh, objectives on this like a long form video understanding benchmark. Uh, I guess you have seven or nine like uh, objectives. It's just to kind of like accumulate the load from different turns and optimize end to end, or you have some kind of like tricks or designs to handle different objectives. Oh, so for the end task, uh, we, we just train different model, one, two, different models for different tasks. So it's not like multi-task, yeah, training, yeah. But they, they do share the same pre-training. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so, so this is actually quite, quite simple. Cool, uh, I think there are two new messages. Um, one message from, let me see. Uh, one message from Xu Dong, um, great talk. How do we know that reasoning is the bottleneck of understanding existing long form videos? Yeah, so I think uh, while. Uh, hmm? oh, sorry, I guess he has also a follow up uh, okay, sentence. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, so, in addition to what is the bottleneck of uh, what? Well, the reason is the bottleneck of understanding existing long form videos. He also mentioned, is it possible that if we can recognize atomic actions and objects perfectly, then reasoning could be rather easily done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I think that's a great question. So that, that's why we compare with the shorter models in all the tests. And in, indeed, uh, there are certain tests like year prediction, we, we just don't need very long-term reasoning, right? But there are some other tasks, such as say like predicting the, the say, say, say the relationships between the characters. I think it's just very hard, even for humans to, if we just watch like a few frames or a few like points of time in, in a video. So uh, I think the philosophy of our benchmark is that uh, we hope to design uh, like very, hard uh, problems that, that are hard even for humans, but we hope to make the output space very simple so, so that it's e easy to evaluate. And since the task is so hard, like director prediction, uh, to get this right, we know that uh, the model must be doing something non-trivial to solve. So, so I think this is the philosophy of, of our benchmark.
Cool. I guess maybe we had time for one more question. Um, while we are waiting, maybe I can ask a very simple clarification question. Sure. Uh, so for your input, it's just, is that just the visual only or is it multi-model? I guess you it, mentioned it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, so far we consider only vision. Got it. And also, uh, I think for your two works, both of them using transformers, and also from our previous invited talks, uh, they are also using transformers. Do you have any sense of like, uh, what might the future direction of like combining maybe commonness and transformers? Like for example, on the predicting year task, first looks like the uh, CN works actually better. We don't really want it to, Kind of like design uh, CN or transformers for individual tasks separately. Um, so maybe you can share some thoughts about what might be the future of these kind of two models, or even like MLP. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I, my my personal in my personal opinion, I think uh, for short term modeling is relatively unclear. Uh, I think both transformer and CNNs can make sense, or even MLP. But for long term modeling, since essentially what long-term modeling do is to model the interactions between you know, points or entities or objects across a long range of time. And in this case, I think convolution just make way less sense than things like attention or NLP. Oh no, so, so I think, I think yeah, attention makes more sense than either NLP or uh, convolution in case of like uh, long-term understanding. Cool. Uh, I think we are at time. Thank you, Chao so much. Uh, I believe this is going to be very useful for the audience. Thank you so much.